Good morning, guys, and welcome back. A nice cough, cough on the go. Sausage and beans. It's not a bad life. Mmm. Bit disappointed with uh, sunset. Complete non-event, really. If anyone didn't see last week's uh, video, I'll pop it up here in the corner. Else, you're straight into part two here, so you've missed the whole hike up to the top of this peak. Um. We're about 45 minutes before the sunrise and I can't really tell at the minute. It does, I mean, there's a fair bit of cloud up there, but it seems like it might be quite clear over in this direction, and which is the west, unfortunately, but uh, it could be something. Um, so yeah, until I sort of get to the edge of the peak, I can't really tell what's going on. But yeah, the tent's down. Obviously, just having a bit of brekkie at the minute. And then we'll set off and see if we can find some compositions and see if we've got any decent conditions this morning as well. So way off in the distance behind us there is the sunrise. It's actually about, probably still about 10 or 15 minutes till the sunrise. But yeah, it looks like it is getting a bit of colour, but it's just... It's just a thin strip of kind of nice sky, and that's it. And we're not sort of going in that direction, and there's, there's no compositions. That's back up where we camped. I'd have to be going the opposite, di opposite direction. What I was kind of banking on was that the, sun's, the, the sun was going to rise from this direction here, which is obviously the east, come up and over and then sort of light up the whole sky on the sort of westerly side, the opposite side. But I think that was kind of like a big ask, especially on uh, my track record. So yeah, it's not like that's going to happen either. God damn it. Not the best. However, I do have one little composition in mind. That, actually, a couple, I think, that I saw yesterday evening as we were walking up to the peak. So I'm going to head back towards them now. They're not too far. And see how I feel about them this morning. So, yeah. Ah, let's crack on. looking rocks that you can see here behind me are what really caught my eye last week and these I really want to photograph these however when I saw them last I was looking from the other side from my composition I was thinking oh yeah look great over there looking this way but the cloud over that way is rubbish it's really gray over here is to the east we've got a little bit of a, a, a tinge of pink in the sky so it's just a little bit more interesting and I think it doesn't matter which side you shoot really if I can do it right, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Ironically, I'm going to be shooting this with my wide angle lens, probably at 11 millimeters, so it doesn't really go with the theme of the video very well. But I promise you, the next composition that I've got in mind, that I saw last week also, will be shot with my telephoto lens, I promise. But for now, yeah, I'm going to try and get a nice shot of these. So I'm going to quickly set up to try and capture a little bit of that sky in the background. So, let's go. Yeah. Right, we're set up. That was quick, wasn't it? What a speed. Now, I've took a few shots here in this sort of position that we've got set up in, but I don't like it. If you look there at the, the sort of main subject, so the biggest rock, I want that to be more protruding into the sky, so protruding above the horizon, which means that I need to go lower down with my camera. So I'm just gonna physically test that out now. Ah, oh, yeah, I only need to go down a few inches. So I just need to lower the tripod and then we're good to go. So just give me a second. Sorted, that's much better. And like I say, this main 
giant rock here just protrudes over the horizon a little bit more and I think it just improves the composition ever so slightly. Small little movements. Anyway, settings, ISO 100 F8. That's giving me one third of a second. It's quite a long shoot of speed. Still got a bit of a breeze. So I'm just doing the old zoom in. Exactly what I did with my last image just to see when it stopped shaking. Whoa, ho, ho, right there actually, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely not an award winning image. But I quite like the composition. I think if there was a nice sky behind that, I would like it a hell of a lot more. But I mean, who wouldn't? Little pathway here in the foreground, which is just helping to lead up to the main subject again which is that big rock just ever so slightly and yeah pretty nice composition i'm glad i've got that one in the bag she holds the fool's gold and her face is to the wind And she holds The fool's gold Yeah, it's easy to pretend So I'm just getting set up now for another shot and this is the kind of leads me on nicely to the the second reason to why I wanted to buy a telephoto lens and it's to basically try and represent scale in my images it's something that I find really frustrating very frustrating actually as a landscape photographer you'll be in a setting such as this that's epic and grand and I mean we're not in the Alps I'm not I'm not trying to kid anybody it's not you know it's not that incredible, but to me, it's still epic and vast. And that's what I want to try and get across some images. And I feel sometimes with a wide angle lens, it, it's quite difficult to tell that story because you can't sort of zone in and specify what you want to say. And I think this is really going to help me do that, hopefully. So yeah, it's all about scale. And this image is um, a little bit experimental, really. And it's, I'm going to be in the image as well in, in the sort of foreground which is also going to help to represent scale as well. And this kind of goes back to how I really started getting into photography. Most of my older images on my Instagram are kind of sort of travel photographs of me looking out into the landscape pensively and then I kind of moved on to sort of normal landscape images. But I still love taking these images, these sorts of images with, with myself in the foreground looking out into the landscape and creating a little bit of scale. And this lens, 55 to 200, is really going to help me make them images a little bit more epic. So I really hope this is going to be a good example of it. Now you can see here, composition-wise, we've got this, this little mound here, a few rocks on it, which is going to be the foreground. And that's where I'm going to sit and stand and pose or whatever. And I've zoomed in at, must be over 100 mil. What are we at? Yeah, Ooh, about 180 mil. So we're nearly, we're nearly at the whole 200 millimetres there. And I've zoomed in to get a very small section of that mound at the sort of bottom of the whole frame. And then everything else in the frame is all the way uh, right back into the landscape. There's actually one or two towns back there. I don't know if it's Hayfield. I'm not too sure. But either way, it's it's really given, it's going to give us some really nice scale to the image, hopefully. I'm shooting it at ISO 100, f5.3, 140th of a second. The wind has dropped down a little bit, which is fantastic. I'm using my intervalometer. Um, probably gonna set it to take a photograph every five seconds. And to be honest, it's pretty far away. Like, I do think sometimes this is a bit of a compromise that you have to make if you wanna get these sorts of images, especially when you've got a, a zoom lens. And with the f5.3 and zooming in at 180 mil, it's gonna, I'm going to be really focused on the rocks and me in the foreground and we're going to get a small little bit of depth of field between the foreground and the background. But the main thing what's happening here is as you zoom in, you kind of bring in the background closer to the foreground and, and compressing. It's almost the opposite of what happens with a wide angle lens, which is amazing. Obviously, it's not happening, happening physically with the landscape. You know, we're not bringing the town closer to us, but it, it kind of appears that way on the screen. So that's that's awesome. 
So yeah, I'll set this to shoot every five seconds, leg it down there, and probably just chill up there for a minute or two, try out a few different poses, and then when I get home, I'll pick my best one. So here's that image now for you guys. Oh, right, I am shattered. <clears throat> I am ready to get home and go to bed. I didn't sleep very well last night. Anyway, I think I'm gonna shoot my last image here. And this is gonna be a nice way to finish, considering this is supposed to have been about the telephoto lens, so this is good. Right behind me here in the background, it's quite a lot of peaks, the landscape's really nice, it's got a lot of rolling hills. Um, and there's two sort of main peaks there. I've just checked my um, Ordnance Survey map. There's one on the right there that I believe is called Famine Hill. And then just to the left of that, it, it, there's a peak there called South Head. If that means any anything to anybody, then that will be good. But yeah, um, I'm probably gonna zoom in maybe 150 millimeters. I've had a little play around with my camera. I think 200 millimeters might be a little bit too, um, a little bit too far zoomed. But, it's going to be a pretty nice composition and pretty abstract and we're just basically capturing the layers of them rolling hills so definitely going to use my tripod um, so I'll get myself set up now and see if I can um, see if I can get a nice image to finish the vlog. This is nice. This is gonna be a nice image. I've changed my mind a little bit. I'm zooming in at 200 mil all the way. And I'm only zooming in on the sort of south head, which is the most sort of prominent peak that was in the middle, but it looks lovely. And what we have really got is some gorgeous layers. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with this shot, to be honest. I'm just gonna zoom back out so I can tell you guys what my settings. F11, ISO 100, 120th of a second. So again, we've got a pretty slow shutter speed. Um, shows you how flat the light is. So I'm doing the old zoom in, see when it stops shaking. That looks like a pretty good opportunity there. Histogram looks good. Magic, lovely final image for the vlog. Right, so. I really love the look of that shot on the back of my camera. Beautiful moody sky and yeah, really nice rolling peaks. Hopefully it works out because I am shattered and that it would be nice. It was a bit grim up there last night, I'm not gonna lie, in the end. So it would be nice to have got a little bit of a reward with that image to make it all worth it, you know. But I'm gonna end it there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this adventure and yeah if you're a landscape photographer get yourself a telephoto lens opens up a few options and yeah it just allows you to play around with your create creativity a little bit i think um so yeah cheers for watching and i'll see you on the next adventure out mm -hmm.